us using OpenShift Origin. Um, they're using S2 on AWS. And in a few months, they're actually going to port all of their big clients and run um, OpenShift 3 on Azure. And that's going to be a lot of good learning that they're going to do and contribute back so that when we want to, as OpenShift at Red Hat, want to do the same thing, we won't be the first ones there. So there's some really good things. So there's hosts and operators. There's everybody who's ever built a cartridge for their service. Um, anyone who's created a Docker image, like the Elastic um, folks, like uh, MongoDB, all of these other companies out there that are providing services that run or integrate into OpenShift. I consider them part of my community because there's that, all the hooks that they need to know. Um, we don't want to be reinventing that wheel every single time. And so what I'm really trying to do is start to create a bigger idea about what community is from an OpenShift point of view. The other piece of the puzzle is, is that OpenShift uh, upstreams, as you heard in the last talk, Kubernetes. It upstreams Docker. So we're very dependent on those communities as well. So instead of like trying to steal resources from the Kubernetes group, what we've done is sort of flipped it all on its head. We embed our engineering resources like Clayton and Vincent Batts and other people into those projects so that we get the features that we need in those projects. So our community isn't just the people working on OpenShift itself and contributing code to the Flash Origin GitHub repo. It is a very big, or vibrant community. So when I talk about OpenShift Commons, you notice I'm not using the word foundation or some other metaphor for a group of people working together on a single project. It's a new community model in the sense that instead of focusing in on just code co contributors, um, we're trying to open and extend the umbrella so that everyone that is working and contributing to that is part of that, that process. And what we are, the reason we started doing this is that you've all heard about how we shifted from V2 to V3. When the V3 started coming out, we had to have these conversations multiple times. We were repeating ourselves. And um, you may have met some of the evangelists um, at, at, for the OpenShift team. There were, at the time, four of us or five of us. We couldn't scale ourselves. It wasn't about scaling containers. It was we couldn't get enough people and product managers to talk in all those one-on-one -on -one conversations. We needed to figure out a way to change the communication model um, because we needed everybody to be talking to each other, not just talking to Red Hat. And we had a fire hose. You know what a fire hose is? Like a, you open the hydrant and it just blows up. Everything changed. Containers changed. Um, the language underneath was Go. The architecture was using Kubernetes. It, you know, we were no longer, anyone who had a cartridge was going to have to create a Docker image. There was a lot of learning that had to go on. And we couldn't do it ourselves. So we had to get a way to get all the peers talking to each other, back and forth. Um, and what we've done is try and create a virtual hub at, open, at commons.openshift.org. We have mailing lists and SIGs, uh, special interest groups. Um, so there's lots of different ways that peers interact with each other. So operators talk to operators. Um, some of the folks who are working on best practices around DevOps have conversations. And you'll see I host a lot of um, podcasts and video conference calls. And it's pretty amazing the number of people. So who's in there today? Um, all of the enterprise customers should be in there. If you're an enterprise customer, using OpenShift Enterprise. It's time to get your feet wet um, and become a little open sourcey and start talking to your peers. Sometimes we have a little difficulty with um, getting permission from like large government agencies. So um, we, we make amends for that. But this is one of, the, one of the key tenets of this group is we really like people to identify who they are. So like in some mailing lists, everybody will be a Gmail address or it'll be some sort of anonymous thing. We're really trying to push people to join and identify who they are so they can find their family and their SIGs and they know each other. Um, so there'll be some people 
um, some U.S. government agents, because I may be, I'm an American living in Canada here in Czech, but um, some of them, like NASA, joined OpenShift Commons, but others um, have to remain nameless. But the, you'll see, if you're on the mailing list, they are allowed to use their actual corporate or government email. So we've been pretty good. There's a lot of service providers, people who were doing cartridges before, people providing um, integrations and APIs that work with OpenShift, folks who are running their own clouds, like Cisco or Dell or um, GetUp Cloud, who I mentioned. There are, the wonderful thing about working in open source is every conference you go to, you meet someone else who's downloaded your open source code and deployed it that you didn't know about. And a few months ago, I was in Tokyo at the OpenStack Summit, and I was really frustrated because I only got one talk accepted. Usually, they have room, and they had like 3,000 people in the call, the call for papers, so they really had to call out. And anyone who'd ever really talked a lot before um, didn't get a speaking slot. So I only got one very short one. And then at the same time as my talk was going on, unbeknownst to me, was a company, a small company called Semantic, <coughs> gave a talk, and they were ranking, they were going through reviewing all of the platforms as the services that are out there. And I was a little worried, because I didn't know these people, right? I didn't know who they were. And I, it was, I wasn't going to get to go and sit in the t talk, because I was giving my talk at the same time. And I um, came out of it, and everybody came to the booth afterwards and said, I had, you know, you should have been there. Where were you? They were just raving about OpenShift. And they had downloaded OpenShift One Origin totally anonymously. I had no idea. And deployed it, and they were using it in production. So um, that's ki kind of why I'm on that sort of bent about people identifying who they are so that um, we can connect. This IRC is, tends to be kind of anonymous, and the mailing lists tend to be kind of anonymous. So we're trying to bring people out of their shells so that different groups can do it, and all the enterprise customers are there. So at the moment, we have 175 different organizations that are part of the OpenShift Commons. That's actually huge. You know, 35 contributing companies is nice, but for us, um, when you, you look at what company will, will stand up and say and give feedback and participate in the design and the processes around building out something like OpenShift, to have 175 organizations is huge. So how does that sort of break out? Um, there's 175 organizations of that. From any time an organization joins, as many people from that company that want to can, can come in and be part of the there. So if you're company XYZ and you have 20 subsidiaries, just join once and all of those folks can come. So we have a rather active mailing list where people are talking to each other and coming to the briefings. And these briefings, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in a minute, but like a couple of the companies that just joined this week is Freescale and Infosys and Weaveworks. So we, on average, we have about two or three new companies popping up, identifying that they're using or integrating with OpenShift and joining the commons. It's a pretty huge community that we're part of. So when I come to a conference like this and I say, I should know every one of you, it's next to impossible. But what I really want is for every one of you to know each other, not just me, not just Red Hat so we can sell you stuff. We want you talking to each other across the community. And we do talk a lot. I know I do talk a lot. So there's the 35 there. there. So how do we um, get that kind of engagement going? And that's really the big chore that I have. Um, it's not a chore, it's actually what I really like doing. The mailing lists is really the key way that people can find each other. Um, we also, on our website have a list of participating organizations. I tend to be myself um, as a community manager. If someone wants an introduction to someone else at another company, I tend to be the linchpin for that, probably the blocker for that. So we haven't quite figured out a, a way to automate that. So if someone says X, Y, Z, I don't want to reinvent LinkedIn. Um, we are starting special interest groups. So if you're an operator or an educator or a government person, a telco, and I think I think there's going to be a networking one, or not a networking one, an OpenStack one coming soon. Um, you can get on a mailing list for that and talk amongst yourselves, and we'll host, um, we host a weekly IRC meeting every Thursday, 
um, that people can come in and ask questions. And in those IRC sessions, we um, give updates from the different upstream projects. So maybe one week we'll get an update on Kubernetes, what's going on there, where the roadblocks are there, on Docker, where the roadblocks are there, what's going on, what the new features are, or some new features. So that happens in the IRC channels. And then there's the Commons briefings. And what that is is an opportunity for members, non-Red Hat ones, um, people with services, to um, showcase their beta integrations. So some people have new tools that they want feedback on, so they'll give a presentation and a demonstration and you're, or something they're passionate about or something that doesn't work. So we end up with trying to do one of those um, every week is sort of my goal. I do travel a lot, so it ends up being about every other week. Um, so if there's something, if there's a topic that you want to hear more about, like Mike Barrett just did that great, what the future is, but if there's one chunk of that that someone's done, interested in, there's a whole slew of briefings that have been recorded from last year that are great. They're on the, open, the commons.openshift.org site under the briefings page, and if you go to the bottom of that, there's a ton of them, and they are actually really good. It's not all me talking. I just introduce people, make them talk about their passionate thing or the feature that they're working on, and then there's a Q&A session afterwards. So if you're watching it, listen through or slide the, the YouTube slide to the end of it, near the end, and you'll hear the questions. And yesterday we did one, Mark Lamarine did a talk about um, running OpenShift on OpenStack using some of the OpenStack resources, um, rather than just running OpenShift on top and ignoring the fact that there's Cinder and other things that you can use directly. So it was actually pretty good in the, the conversation after, which was probably even more interesting than the presentation. But the presentation was really good too. So the things we're doing with the upstream community, I mentioned um, Microsoft Azure. Uh, GetUp Cloud is going to launch supposedly in early June. I know they're already moving their first big clients over to that and doing some testing. Um, we're working with Azure to get support for running .NET containers. That's coming out sometime in the future too. So you'll probably see a common briefing on that when it gets ready. Um, and we're making sure that we have the interoperability with Azure. We want to make sure that we run on any platform. The OpenShift dedicated, um, but managed hosted version of OpenShift Online that is running um, on, um, with using OpenShift 3 will be running on GCP. And OpenShift Online V2, the stuff that you're using now, is running on AWS. Um, you can run it on bare metal too, and on VMware, and lots of other things, but we're really trying hard to make sure that the interoperability and is pretty seamless between the different infrastructures that you can run on. Kubernetes, I, um, I like to say that OpenShift um, 3 is the best route to having an enterprise production ready deployment of Kubernetes. Because when you deploy OpenShift, you get OpenShift 3 and you also get Kubernetes. So depending on which way you want to get it, you can still use Kubernetes directly um, or you can use the OpenShift on them. So it's, and it, I think they've done a very good job of making those Ansible playbooks and working with Heat um, to make it very simple to um, deploy anywhere and um, even on OpenStack. So as I mentioned earlier, we, do, we have embedded resources into the Kubernetes project. They've done work on ours. If you remember, a side piece of Gear D actually ended up moving over from OpenShift and reincarnating over in Kubernetes. We will be at, in force, at the KubiCon events that are upcoming in March. There's KubiCon in London, um, the EU one, and North America. There'll also be another one there. And you will see lots of Red Hats and lots of OpenShift people there because we really are working in tandem with Google and um, making that work. So there are tons of atomic presentations here. I'm not going to go too deep dive or talk too much about there, but basically we upstream atomic into OpenShift. So we do a lot of, we make sure everything, all the pieces and parts are there that we need. And we're really trying to um, embrace atomic and help other people understand it better. So you'll see in the Commons briefings, there's I think four atomic related um, talks that are recorded and there'll be a number more coming up. Um, in Docker, we've also, Vincent Batts is running around 
here at the conference, we've taken resources from Red Hat Engineering and put it into the Docker project. Dan Walsh has done a ton of work around securing Docker containers. Um, and we're working on getting some of the patches that we've requested merged into Docker as well. So there's a lot of conversation that goes on between all of these communities. Uh, let's see. So I've talked a lot about um, Commons briefing, some of the upcoming things. Let's see. We just did the OpenShift 3 on OpenStack. Uh, we're here at DevConf. There's a service linking and service catalogs um, thing that's coming up. And then the identity management one that's coming up in February 25th is actually quite interesting. Um, Open Unison is a recently open source project from Tremelo Securities. Uh, security? Yeah, Tremelo Security. Um, that helps, is good. They're, they're going to present their integration, and it's used in a lot of the large uh, US government agencies to do identity management. So it'll, that's, an inter that's sort of what I'm trying to do this year is to get at least 50% of the talks given by non-Red Hat community people. So if you are a not a Red Hatter and there's something that you're passionate about or there's a side project that you want to talk about or get feedback on, because one of the wonderful things about these talks is that it's a great feedback mechanism. So we had um, a fellow come on mid-year last year and he had written just this alpha version of a monitoring tool for Docker containers inside of K Kubernetes and the whole conversation after his presentation and his brief demo helped him really figure out what was necessary to go to the next level. So this is the kind of interaction that we're really trying to get, is to have those conversations about use cases and best practices for OpenShift, um, and not necessarily just about OpenShift. And then sometime in April, um, the GetUp Cloud guys are going to come and talk about running and deploy the test give us an update on their work getting OpenShift running on Azure, and that should be really very interesting, very cool. A bunch of folks from down in, uh, down in Brazil. So I mentioned KubeCon. Any of you guys going to KubeCon? No. One. Okay, well, you're with Red Hat. Good, I'll make you work in the booth. Ha <laughs> 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 hey. So th they're, they're supposedly going to, uh, they're tentatively saying the North American one will be in Seattle. Um, at each of those events, we will have an OpenShift Commons meetup where what we're going to do is every one of the Commons members who are there, it's kind of a social thing, kind of like we'll drink some beer, we'll talk about the beer, then we'll talk about what they're doing with OpenShift, where their roadblocks are, what sidecar things that they need us to do, um, and it's more of a, a, a push to get the conversation going. Um, there'll be a panel on how to contribute to Kubernetes and origin um, on the main stage at, at KubeCon. So there's a, and it won't just be me talking. It'll be other folks, too. Um, at Red Hat Summit, there's going to be Commons panels. There'll be meetups. There's going, and we're going to have a whole track, a virtual track, of um, following all the different people and partners throughout from the Commons throughout the Red Hat uh, event. The calendar events, which I will show you in a minute, um, too, which is on the briefings, will always keep, um, keep you up to date. But if you join the Commons um, mailing list, which is at, on the main homepage for commons.openship.org, um, you can stay up to date. And anyone from Red Hat is welcome, too. So if you're not already on it, just put it in there. And it's semi-automated. Um, you have to wait for my time zone to catch up, and I will um, add you into the mailing list and get you on the announce list for that. Um, and we are going to host a, a CFP. We're going to host something called the OpenShift Gathering. We do everything virtually because, as you all know, OpenShift is pretty global. You saw from the winter of code, there was France and Japan, and um, let's see, the other was Slovakia, Slovakia one. So it was like this huge range of people. And um, I live in Vancouver in Canada, so I'm on the West Coast, so trying to keep up with all of these things would have to be virtual. But we are committing to having an actual physical get-together um, sometime, and it's going to be on the, either right after the KubeCon in August is what we're, we're pushing for. And so we'll have two days, and what we're gonna do is have um, TED, tiles, TED, TED Talks, TED Style Talk, TED, Anyways, TED Talks from people in the different um, commons uh, user groups, 
and different um, parts of the project. And then for the first day, and we're gonna have good beer. I'm just, did I mention beer? I did. <laughs> It'll be good beer, because um, it's in Seattle and we're gonna bring microbrewers in. We're gonna do a, um, a session there, a workshop on contributor training, because I think as how to set up your environment so that you can do testing locally and contribute code. I think that's one of the, the things, because OpenShift becomes such a complex application, that it's really good. So if you need to justify to your company why you're coming, um, that's good. And there'll be a number of hands-on workshops. Um, a lot of you might have heard of the road shows that we did over the past year to get people up to speed on OpenShift 3. It's going to be kind of like that, but um, more hands-on, mostly hands-on. There'll be no slide projector showing things like what you're seeing right now. Um, so that's really what we're trying to do is keep it as virtual as possible, keep all those peer-to-peer -peer connections connecting, um, try and get Red Hat out of the way. So a lot of times, because I seem to be the, the, the connector point for a lot of introducing people, but also we're trying to make it so that we're not the only ones talking. So I've been talking for a bit, but um, that's really, um, the Commons Gathering is 216. You will see that's um, a website come up. I encourage you to mail, uh, join the mailing list. You'll see Twitter tweets out from me, from the OpenShift Commons and the OpenShift Twitter accounts. Um, you'll see it post, posted on probably up in the IRC when the CFP comes out for the gathering. Um, and we would love to have you all attend. Um, if Red Hat pays for all of you to come, that would be awesome too. Seattle's a wonderful place. But um, we haven't got an official date yet, because KubiCon hasn't even given an official date for North America. But that will be, there'll be a call for paper um, and submissions, and hopefully we'll, we'll find some funds to subsidize some of the trail, travel. But um, all right, this is how you're going to get notification of all this. Please go in and join and, it, and end up um, on the mailing list. I will not stalk you. I will not. Um, try and sell you anything. I'm on the open source side of things. I'm an origin. I'm not going to try and up to you uh, to OpenShift Enterprise or dedicated, but you will get the announcement when the developer preview comes out. I will let, let you guys in on whenever that date is and where the form is to sign up, and um, we'll get you on board and you'll hear all of the new release announcements coming out through this mailing list. So um, that's what I had to share. And I'm going to have to give this as a lightning talk later, so I'm going to do the same thing even faster um, in a little bit. But so the, so the real crux of it is this OpenShift Commons is really about you meeting each other in a virtual second life-ish place and um, sharing your information with each other rather than waiting for Red Hat to give it to you and spoon feed it to you. There are a lot of Red Hat presentations there on the briefing site. I'll, prank, I'll pull that up for a minute. But while I'm doing that, um, oops, and I'm, oh, that's the other thing. How many of you use Slack? Yeah, how many of you love Slack? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I was going to um, do a Slack channel, but uh, I'm not feeling the love here. I'm, I really like IRC, so I'm kind of um, doing that. So I'm thinking, let's see. So the common site is right here. And let's see if, um, if you want to join the mailing list. But the one thing that I'd really like you to do today is go in, and I'm not going to unstar me, but star this, this repo and pay attention uh, to this repo and, and like it for me. And I'm hoping that by the time this conference is over, we will have um, for, over 40 more and we'll break our 1,000 likes. And that will make all of the developers very happy. It's not necessarily a screen app. If you do refresh it. Oh, if I refresh it. it. All right, all right, all right. All right, very good. Oh, look at that, a jump. All right. OK, who hasn't liked it yet? You don't have your computer with you. OK. All right, well, get there soon. So please join us. Thank you all for working on OpenShift, using OpenShift. It's um, an awesome project to be associated with, and I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you.
I would love to come to China. You know, like we have 20% of world population. I know. Um, I've been to Beijing and Shanghai many times, but not on behalf of Red Hat. So um, I, give me an excuse and an event. Wow, I would say a lot Yeah, well, it, send me an email. Uh, no. All right, uh, and, and, and let me know. And I uh, work with the um, sales team that's there. Because they're the one that, that so gives you the I don't know their names. No, no problem. Yeah, and, and then we can get that done. Yeah, because we are all doing all this thing, Docker, Cloud, especially like Cloud. We, we have been like, fighting with like, some Cloud Foundry. Yeah. Well, I used to work on Cloud Foundry. You really? Yeah, I worked for Active State before I came. I worked on Staccato. Oh, okay. So I know all the Cloud Foundry stuff. I know where the, I know where the skeletons are. Yeah, so it's, and they have, um, what's wonderful about Cloud Foundry is they have a really good services arm, right? They, the, the labs that they do, they're more about um, providing consulting services than they are about software and teaching people how to be agile and all that. And we're more about the software and making sure the software scales and works and stuff. So it's, sometimes it's apples and oranges. So we got a lot of people. They got them. Well, because they're a cons yeah. if you're going to have a consultancy, you have to have a lot of people because it's the only way it scales. So and so they're all over the place and they must be right. in your face quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. We can work on that. We can work on that. All right. Well, make sure you email me and remind me and um, we'll set. Because I'm in Vancouver, BC, so flying from Vancouver West Coast to China is not that bad. Yeah. yeah, and now I've been to Bangalore and over there a couple of times. So it's, it, you know, we could do a, a tour. What I'd like to do is find um, the Commons members who are there and have them come and present rather than me talk and and have a, a have a community meetup. Yeah, yeah, we need to make at least some some noise there before we actually yeah. got some comment. Yeah. yeah, no, we can do that. I can help you with that. Yeah, I, I've noticed uh, quite some like questions or enthusiastic in the ERC channel of OpenShift in China time zone, but it's probably we're all asleep. Yeah. yeah. So what we need to do is start figuring out who those people are. Inviting them into the commons, mm -hmm. getting them to join so that they identify themselves and their companies so that we can connect them. And that's what the commons is really about. We connect them to each other and to Red Hat, and hopefully we can grow a community there. And Because, um, as I said, we're, um, we don't have the budget um, for, uh, and we can't, <laughs> we can't clone ourselves, you know. And so, and, and we're not, we're not about being a cons consulting services group. We're about, we're engineers. So, right. Totally. So, will you call me? Ah. What company are you with? I was with Red Hat. I, I thought so. Hat. Yeah, and where did you go? I started my own so consulting oh. and training for Docker. Oh, cool. My name is cool. Bangalore. Cool. So I read the book last time, you remember? I read the book on Docker Cook book last time. That's Talk right. To. Yes. yes did, did you? Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> I knew I'd seen your face, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, I thought you were with Red Hat. But yeah, I left two months back only. Okay. Well, join the um, comments. Yeah, yes, actually, list. I was getting the email on Red Hat ID. I was there in the comments for Red Hat ID. I kind of just forgot about it. I like to with my yeah. Gmail or whatever ID. So that, uh, Cool. All right. Well, now we'll get you in, and you can give a presentation on how to teach teach Docker stuff. Yeah, sure. So I'm currently I might be consulting uh, in for some uh, project. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just other day. So basically, if I'm happy, I'm going to consult in process most likely in a couple of weeks. Well, I can connect you with those people. Yeah. That would be good. And there's because they said that they don't want to do that. They just need to work with the people. They always have atomic activities. Yeah, so that's all right. We can work on that. Yeah. And Atomic and Kubernetes is a, is a good
good combination. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I think that the way that I try and describe OpenShift today is if you deploy OpenShift, yeah. you get OpenShift and you get direct yeah. Kubernetes. So, so it's yeah. You know, it, I it, understand. It, yeah, it doesn't really cost them any more, but I think it's the same subscription. So it's pretty, pretty cool. I just want to say that you have a for industrial engineering from Bangalore. Ah, see, I need an excuse to come back to Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I haven't been in like 10 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure everything has changed. Because yeah. yeah. everything has changed every time you go there. It's like a totally yeah. different town. Yeah. <laughs> we got an office there a few yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah. Back in Bangalore, yeah. Which company? I mean, Red Hat. Oh, Red Hat? Yeah. still have office. Yes, yeah, so uh, actually, Lester. Three years ago, the Lester team. The Lester team. The Lester team is being bought by Red Hat. Right? So, Lester Engineering Team, whatever, and I was using the office to come to the building. Yeah, right. I don't think that. Yeah, I didn't like And it might be a, maybe a better place for the city if you want to share it. Well, so the, I guess the, where I'm coming from is, you know, that's, we're wanting to get the goods of the origin of the city. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. And I think it's happened. So it's essentially a post. Perspective, you know, uh, you know, want to help with the folks who are in the that they will not take that around. Uh, so, uh, 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 uh,
Před 15. a 20. rokama dokonce. To už. určitě nic, nic takového nepovolí. No, no, nás to zajímalo spíš z toho hlediska, aby to šlo sloupnout a, a bez, bez následků, protože v pondělí ráno začínáme na ostro. <laughs> Takže v neděli, jak budou končit, jak to budou muset odstranit, na to se z chutí podívám. A zatímco jsem se díval po těch šipkách, tak vypadá to, že drží všechny. I přes ten provoz, a provoz tady byl docela veliký. Jo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, to asi se zablátí, zablátí všechno. Jo. No, 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 no. Ale on tady, on tady je, protože on to má jaksi pod palce. Takže, takže a běhá tady kolem všeho, já mu volám kvůli nějaké věci, jo. 
Já myslím, že jo, oni teďka, oni teďka budou mít nějaký, nějaký poslední ten blázinec v D105, takže nevím, jestli nebude tam, bo bude nějaký... Jasně. Určitě ho potkám. Mm-hmm. 